to whiskey, straight up. And now your host, Derek. Welcome to the show. On this episode, I'll be giving you four celebrity whiskeys that I think are worth your time. I'm also going to give you one that's priced so high that I think only a celebrity could consistently drink it, and it's not good whiskey. Before I get into that topic, though, I want to remind anyone new to the show, hit the subscribe button. Also, drop us a note in the comments and let me know, do you love, do you hate anything on this list? I'd love to hear back from you. So, celebrity-owned spirits brands have had a stigma around them that they're terrible. And they have been. There's been so many brands that just don't live up to that price point or don't live up to that celebrity's name. And we've tasted them in the past. And I think every time something new comes out, it's like, oh, now Florida Georgia Line is doing another whiskey. Oh, well, now this so-and-so is doing another whiskey. And they've been lower budget brands that maybe not, maybe they're not bad whiskeys for your everyday uh, whiskey drinker is just going to throw it on ice or doesn't really care too much about all like the flavor notes. But for someone like myself or most of the people that probably are stumbling along this video, we want a little more from our whiskey. And when a celebrity gets involved, you think, wow, they got money and they're probably going to put the marketing behind it. Hopefully it's something good. And a lot of times it just hasn't been. Um, <laughs> seriously, I've had some terrible celebrity whiskey and I don't want to just call out FGL because, uh, they're not the only ones out there that have had whiskeys that are, we'll call them uh, lower priced options that are, maybe don't go uh, particularly well with the bourbon aficionados. So I do think the good news is that we're turning a corner now. There's some good brands that are starting to come out. Celebrities, sports stars, are they're actually drinking good bourbon and good whiskey at home Uh I think that helps them make better choices when they're coming out with their brands that they want to start themselves. I do think someone like a Jared Allen, who used to play for the Vikings, might be a good example of somebody that I might trust. Now, keep in mind, he hasn't actually announced what he's doing with his whiskey yet. But he did say something on one of the other podcasts where he, uh, I think it was Fred Minnick's show, where he said they bought a bunch of MGP barrels and they're just waiting on them to get to the right age and they don't really know what they're going to do with them yet. Knowing that he has been on Minnick's show a few times and talked about bourbon in many other places, and just hearing some of the stuff that he's drinking, I have faith that he'll at least pick something that, or start something that's got some flavor or tastes a little bit better than uh, your bottom shelf stuff. That's great for Jared, but there's definitely some celebrities or, or sports people that get into whiskey that don't know a lot about it, and then they make poor choices, or they lean on someone else that they maybe don't even know to pick this stuff. And I think that's how we end up with some of these bad brands. So I do want to get into a list that is just speaking about uh, four whiskey companies that are celebrity backed in some way that I can stand behind today. And I do have one at the end that I'd like to call out, um, not to call them out in particular, but just I want to make sure people don't spend the crazy money on this bottle because... Uh, I think they need to know what's inside of it before they actually open it. So number four, American Highway Reserve. Brad P- Brad Paisley started this one. Uh, you know, Brad, I seem I feel like he's like kind of like a whiskey guy. Uh, I know he's got some people behind it that know a little bit about what they're doing. I I I know it's a little gimmicky, but uh, hear me out here. So there's a blend of four Kentucky bourbons in there. It's not disclosed where they're from, but I've heard one of them's Bardstown Bourbon Company. There's a three-year, another three-year, a 13-year, and a 15-year in there, and it's all blended together. It's aged on what they call a rolling rickhouse, which is tractor-trailer, and I think it's actually, it follows his tour bus, but I'm not 100% sure if that's true. Uh, (laughs) Travels all over the United States. It's, while it's rolling, it's got an average temperature of like 93.5 degrees, which is pretty high, right? Uh, Kentucky will only see that during some seasons. There's a theory here, kind of like Jefferson's Ocean, where there's more movement, so there's more sloshing around and going into the wood and coming out and getting more flavor. And then the heat, the high heat, is supposed to do something for it as well. I have tasted it. I've only tasted batch one. I don't know when batch two is being released. For all I know, at the time of this airing, it's already out. But batch one was good. And I was surprised because 
I thought, I don't have a problem with Jefferson's Ocean, but I felt like they were biting off them. I felt like it was just a gimmicky thing and probably thrown together real quickly. But the fact that they blended four different Kentucky bourbons together, uh, that right there tell, tells me something because it's not just, oh, just give me six here and I'm going to roll with it. Literally, roll with it. Um, it's uh, it's sitting down and thinking, okay, this three-year, I like this three-year, there's some notes here that I like. Let's blend it with the 13 and the 15, see what we can do. And I think there's thought process behind it, which is why I added it to this list. It's $100 for this bottle. I don't think it's a terrible price point, just given that there's a 13-year and a 15-year in there. And I think there's a pretty good amount of it. I think there's like over 40% of the whiskey is that 13 and 15 year blended. So you're not just getting a lot of three year and then a tiny little bit of the age stuff. I just, I think it's good. It's, is it the most amazing whiskey I've ever had? No, but for a celebrity owned whiskey, a hundred dollars, I think it's one of the few that's actually worth it. So that's number four on my list, American highway reserve by Brad Paisley and four, uh, undisclosed Kentucky bourbon, uh, producers. Number three on my list is going to be really short because there's not a lot of information on it, but it's Bradshaw Bourbon. So Terry Bradshaw is behind it. It's distilled by Green River Distilling, who is actually owned by Bardstown Bourbon. Um, Green River Distilling, I, I really like the stuff that they're putting out. Uh, we're going to have in a few weeks some samples of their new stuff that they're putting out, the, like the cast strength. And uh, I think they're doing like a rye or a high rye. Uh, we'll have some samples of that, but just their regular bourbon that I've had on the on the off the shelf in in Tennessee was was really good. It was smooth, tasty, had good flavor, and this is basically what I got off the Bradshaw bourbon too. Now I think that 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 uh, Green River regular but uh, uh, bourbon is uh, maybe like three or four years aged. The Terry Bradshaw one, it's only two, but look around on YouTube or. Or some of these other review sites, it's getting good reviews. Now, know what you're looking at. It's a two year and it's forty dollars, but it's tasty, and I think that that's all that matters to me. So for forty bucks to have something on my shelf that says Bradshaw on it, it's got a story, it has some good flavor, it's tasty. I feel like they're doing it right, and I feel like maybe in the future they might do some more stuff that's aged. I do know a rye either is coming out or is out now. Um, I like to focus on the bourbon because it's the one I've tasted and it's really good uh, for a two-year uh, aged bourbon. So uh, check them out. Number three on my list, Bradshaw bourbon. Uh, it's delicious for the price. Number two on my list is Cedar Ridge, number nine, Ohio- Iowa whiskey. So think Iowa. You don't have a lot of distilleries there. And think celebrity Slipknot. So I'm a Slipknot fan. I like a lot of heavier music. I I don't agree with everything that they 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 put out, but they they have some really good music they put out over the years that I've enjoyed. Uh, Sean, whose nickname is Clown, is number nine. Number nine of the band. Number nine. Uh, he is the one that kind of got this going and 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 started it. He partnered with Cedar Ridge. I think. Honestly, the original point was, oh, they're Iowa. We have to partner with an Iowa distillery. But he didn't make a bad choice because Cedar Ridge does have some good stuff that they're doing. He uh, put this whiskey together and to be 100% transparent, I didn't want to try it because I didn't want to sully the name in my head of why would Slipknot put this garbage out. So I took some time before I actually tried it. What got me thinking about it was during the pandemic, he went on... Uh, a bunch of the podcasts, I say a bunch, I think it was a couple. And I listened to him speak and I'm like, oh, this guy sounds like he knows a little bit about whiskey. And then I listened to the reactions of the people tasting it. And I was like, okay, I have to get myself a bottle now. So I got myself the regular uh, version, Iowa whiskey, and then the reserve version, the uh, $40 regular Iowa whiskey is quite tasty. The proof points 90 proof. Uh, I was surprised by the flavor. It's pretty good. And the $70 for the reserve, to be 100% honest, I didn't see the jump in the price point when I tasted it, but the flavor is good and it's not a bad whiskey. And if I had tasted that on its own, I would have liked it. I do know that they're doing cask finish stuff. I don't know what else they have in their plans, but there's a thing on their website that says that these guys are now sourcing some barrels from Kentucky and Indiana. 
And that's going to be used for some of the, like the play around stuff, I guess, like cast, uh, uh, cast finish and, and other things like that. So I'll be interested to see how that goes. I think no matter what, they're always going to blend some of the Cedar Ridge juice in there, but just a little worried that they're going to get away from what they started and start playing with some other stuff. So that's something to keep an eye on. But I mean, if I'm being honest, it was, it tasted good. And I'm going to put my trust in these guys for now and, and, and see what they come out with and, and try some of it because the original blends or the original uh, whiskeys that they put out, tasty. Number one on my list is Blackened. It's Blackened. It's a good whiskey bl- brand. You know, it became, it, it became something that I didn't expect it to become. In the beginning, I had trust and faith in it because... Their master distiller and blender was Dave Pickerel. Well, we all know Dave. Dave was be he was the master distiller at Maker's Mark for so many years, and then he spun off and helped so many of the brands that we like now uh, get off the ground and gave them all this knowledge, all these tips. You know, whether he came in on a contract and just stayed for six months, helped them out, and left, or he stayed for longer. Like all these brands are successful now, or at least on their way to being successful. He was involved in Whistlepig. He was involved in uh, Woodenville. And, you know, he helped the guys at Filibuster and Ragged Branch. And there's all these big brands that are out there that are making millions of dollars that he helped them start. So I had some faith there. And knowing Metallica was behind it, there's money. So unfortunately, Dave passed away in 2018, right when the brand was was launching. He didn't actually get to see it fulfill. So that's kind of sad. Then we have a new master distiller, Rob Dietrich, who came from uh, Stranahan's. Uh, Rob wanted to continue Dave's legacy, so he didn't mess with a lot of the original idea. And he's kind of known for preserving what Dave wanted from the start. And then he's doing some new things uh, that I think are things that like he would think Dave wanted to do in the future. So... They have a lot of different things they've done. They do their regular blackened, which is bourbon and rye blend. It's finished in black brandy uh, casks. They have a cast strength, same thing, cast strength. They have a Willet collaboration, a Henderson collaboration. Um, both those, the Willet's fi- finished in a Madeira. The Henderson's finished in white port. They have rye the lightning, which is an amazing name to begin with, uh, which is a straight rye. And they do they do a lot of like limited edition releases. It's like, a Metallica package, whether it's vinyl with it or some other stuff, but they have a lot of cool stuff going on. And I can only imagine what else these uh, collaborations are going to come out over the next couple of years. I'm I'm excited about it. They're doing everything right. Some of those collaborations can be quite expensive, but if you think about it, the Willet one at 150, I mean, think about how much a Willet barrel pick costs just retail. I mean, sometimes it's like (laughs) over $200 before they even put any markup on it. Um, so I, I don't think that that was priced out of range. I think that was a good price for it. And I think that they're doing these uh, collaborations with smart people, uh, you know, collaborating with, with Drew at Willett, collaborating with Wes Henderson uh, from Angel's Envy. I think they're doing everything right. So I'm excited about the future with them. I love what they've done so far. I, that I just, I, I, I'd be remiss if I had let them off this list. And to be honest... Right now, today, they're my number one. So not everyone gets to do things like Metallica has. Metallica did things the right way. Um, They picked the right people. They I don't know how involved they are in the day-to-day other than their music being a part of it. But it was a brand that was done right. And I I think it shows with the stuff that they're coming out with. I can't say the same about the bad one on my list. I want to call this one out because it's expensive and people jump to grab it and I think they regret it later. The one bad one I want to call out on this list is Sweeten's Cove. It's owned by Peyton Manning, Andy Roddick, and some other people. Uh, they, They brought in Marianne Eves, who I respect dearly. And she blended this. It tells a great story about a country club you know, the interviews and the media around the first release were fun to listen to and watch. You know, they went on a bunch of the shows and, that we all love and they uh, they did like the rounds in the media and, and it was fun to watch Peyton and uh, Cooper was there for a lot of them. And 
I just hearing the interaction and the joking of brothers and other things. It was it was a good time. But it's two hundred dollar dickle. I know they have fifty dollar bottles, but I I'm not mad at those. It's this two hundred dollar bottle of Sweetens Cove Tennessee whiskey. It tastes bad. It's dickle. I'm not a dickle fan. There is no reason in my head that there should be a two hundred dollar bottle of dickle out on the shelf when we have fifteen year. Uh, Dickel picks that are sitting in stores for like $45. It just doesn't make sense. And I'm sure you could tell from some of the videos, I'm not a Dickel fan. I'm sure Marianne did an amazing job blending what she had to work with. And I'm sure some people love Dickel. And if you do go buy this, you'll probably love it. But I can't justify this price point. I really wanted to like it. uh, But my sample... I drank like half of it and left the rest in the glass for $200 whiskey. That should not be the experience. Now this is my experience, but I do know a lot of people in the whiskey industry and a lot of people in like my area, just through whiskey societies. I don't know anyone that really liked this. So if you're looking at that shelf or you're at home and you're thinking, man, Peyton Manning's got a whiskey. I got to have it. Maybe try to find a pour at a bar first to see if you even like it. Because this stuff is, it's dickle and it's just not, it's a very strong flavor profile. And I know a lot of whiskey people just aren't a fan of it. So I'm not going to keep dumping on dickle because um, we all know what dickle is and you either love it or you hate it. Anyways, don't buy it. (laughs) Well, folks, that brings us to the end of the show. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts in the comments. What bottles have you guys bought that were celebrity back that you loved, that you hated? You know, I'd love to hear from you. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of the show. I'm done dumping on Dickel and I'm done fanboying about Willet and Metallica. So <laughs> I do want to hear some of your favorite whiskeys that celebrities are behind in the comments. So if you could drop your favorites down there, drop the ones you hate down there. Let's let's chat about it. But that's all for tonight. Remember Hit that subscribe button, and as always, drink responsibly. Cheers.